Hey, home buddies. Last week I broke down how to broadcast a virtual performance from a virtual stage into a video conference like Zoom using open broadcaster software, a virtual cam plugin, and a virtual audio cable. You can check that out somewhere around here if you missed it. We've seen a lot of Zoom plays and radio drama these past couple months, but I really wanted a way to share the stage with another performer. In my last video, I needed to trick Zoom into treating my computer software like a camera. But this week, I want to do the opposite. I want my computer software to detect my video conferencing as multiple camera inputs that then I can control and composite live in real time. For this, I'm going to need a network device interface from NDI.TV. These plugins allow me to essentially define and control any media source across my entire network. So I download the NDI plugin and I set up a new scene in OBS for Skype. I go to Window Capture, treating it as a Skype window, and I can select Skype right here. Now in my settings, I want to make sure in my audio video that I am using my web camera. Our trick last week to send everything through a virtual audio cable B into OBS. And then down in the calling, I want to click on Advanced and turn on this Allow NDI usage. Now I can capture the NDI of the Skype, which my computer will treat as its own camera source. Little crop do here. Add a little filter of chroma key to get rid of my green screen. Real quick and terrible. Here we go. And now I've composited myself from Skype onto my virtual stage. So then I had my friend Gabe Brown, a fantastic theater actor in New York, Skype with me uh, using the same black background and with our laptops in front of us at about the same height and distance. And then it looked like when we composited the images next to each other that we were in a similar black box theater. Not great, but not nothing. As you can see, we got a lot of lag issues and obviously a little quality buffering because of the way that Skype really compresses video for optimal streaming. But we really found ourselves at the mercy of our own Wi-Fi and our computing processing power on our laptops. We replicated the experiment in Google Meet and Zoom and a few other video conferencing services and really found this to be consistent across the board. But more importantly, Gabe and I couldn't see each other. So we're missing that connection that makes live performance so meaningful. What I quickly realized is that every actor needs two cameras. The audience camera that we can composite and move around to broadcast back out to put the actors together. But then a scene partner camera on stage that we could put at eye level to allow the actors to authentically connect and respond and play off of each other. So I need a second camera. The easiest solution is just to get a web camera with a USB cable and connect it to that same laptop so that I've got my on-stage partner camera, and then my audience camera coming through the same video conference. But if you thought the video was laggy and poor quality before, adding multiple devices really puts a strain on it and makes it very difficult to bring into OBS with more than one camera at a time. Also, most of these video conferencing platforms don't allow you to connect multiple cameras just with multiple devices. So then you're scattered across a phone over here, a laptop over here, all trying to log in with different accounts, and then trying to organize that on the back end for the stage manager to bring into OBS. There are apps like Minicam that will allow you to bring in uh, multiple camera feeds to the same Skype window. But going back to our Skype window, we can see that if we have to start enlarging this to just take a section of it, the video quality drops off very, very sharply. So getting back to square one, if we're going to treat these cameras like two completely separate experiences, the audience and the performer, why not just think about what application makes each one the best that it can be? I can't guarantee that most actors have access to a webcam or an external camera, but most people do have a smartphone. I just need a way to turn any smartphone in the world into a live video feed that I can control. And fortunately, there's people already building apps for this, mostly for security cameras and baby monitor apps. So I downloaded an app called Alfred Home Security that can turn any smart device loaded with the app into either a camera or a viewer. Now I can access the live feed of multiple devices and composite them in real time by treating each camera like its own feed that I can control and move around within OBS. Now I go into filters 
add our little chroma key for green screen. And now I can composite and control any device in my virtual environment in Open Broadcaster software. There are many apps like this. This is just the one that I used for this test. I am not endorsing this product, nor can I really. They've not contacted me. I've not contacted them. I've used it for a very little amount of time, just letting you know the tools that I used for this experiment. Anyone can download the app immediately in my web viewer. If we log into the same account, I can see all the camera feeds with video and audio, bring them in as individual browser windows to OBS, composite them how I like, and then send that virtual signal back out to the world as a composited shared virtual stage. Huzzah! But we still, of course, have problems. The video quality is about 720, and you get a few pop-up ads throughout the app experience. Obviously, this is how they make money. However, there is a pro version for $4.99 a month. So I went ahead and bought that. And for five bucks a month, you get full HD quality, which gives us a much better image to work off of, especially if we're trying to replace the background or do any kind of stretching and rotating and messing around with the final image. Great, so I've got Ashley Clements on a Zoom call with our partner laptops, and then our mobile devices are running the Alfred app, which I'm bringing into OBS, layering next to each other. Ashley's on a black curtain, I'm on the green curtain, and you can see that her skin tones start to look a little weird because I had to really crush those blacks and really play with color to get us to kind of match backgrounds in the space and make it look like we were standing in the same black void. So not ideal, not great, but we can see that I'm able to source two images in real time from the Alfred Audience app while we can actually see each other, talk to each other in real time on our laptops. So a minor success. <laughs> But Ashley does have one of her walls painted blue, so I wondered if I could key that out the same way I keyed my green screen and then put us next to each other in a virtual environment. Boomtown! Now I have us both separated from our backgrounds. I can put us and composite us in the space. We have to work a little bit on our distance from the camera, but that's part of blocking in any stage show. And it looks pretty good because we're relying on our cellular service for the audience camera because it's on our mobile devices. We don't have to worry about throttling our Wi-Fi as much, which also gives us a better connection on our partner camera. It's not perfect, but there's a lot of potential here. I had a really cool chat with Burning Coal Theater Company in Raleigh, North Carolina who actually gave me one of my first equity jobs, about the idea of using non-traditional cameras for broadcasting. Things like CCTVs and deer cameras that use cellular chips to send out up to a 4K image. But while I am very, very excited about testing out some of those non-traditional camera options, they're not really designed to take in quality audio. So let's put a pin in our audience camera and get back to our partner camera to see if there's a solution there. We put our laptops up on you know, dressers or music stands or cabinets to be able to make them about eye level. And then we both wore Bluetooth headphones so that we could hear each other and be heard in a much more natural and clean way and source that back through OBS using the virtual audio cable we discussed in last week's video. We did try the Zoom call-in number feature for a bit to see if the audio quality was better, but we ultimately decided that the internet audio was best. So I invite Ashley to a Zoom meeting in my settings. I make sure my speaker is set to our virtual cable, B. And then in OBS, I remember to add an audio input, label it as my cable B, and then go find it from the dropdown. And now I can see the Zoom calls levels and control them here in OBS and make sure that our audio is coming in clearly. Now Ashley and I can just focus on our Zoom call and our personal connection. OBS gets better audio and we get better video quality. So now we can take this composited video and send it back out to any streaming platform. Otherwise, we can take it right back into our video conference so that a director or stage manager or we could observe the final experience. I think there's a lot of possibilities using particularly cellular CCTV cameras or baby monitors to kind of source a bunch of different videos, especially if we can figure out the audio quality 
issue. And if anybody wants to sponsor me with some software or some product like some cameras or some ear pods, I would totally be down with that. But right now, what we have is a $5 a month solution to be able to integrate any scene partner into your virtual stage experience. If you're interested in more of this experiment, you know the drill. You can like, subscribe, and share. You can leave comments and questions. Please be kind. And you can find me at all the places under the handle Brendan A. Bradley. Now go create something.